was lonely, I will say. And I didn't want to be the type to always, you know, to have, like, different niggas coming in my house and stuff like that. I really wanted a relationship. I didn't want to be a hoe. My hoe days had been over with a long time. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching so far. I know y'all been enjoying my past story times. So just stay tuned because it's just going to get better and better. As you can see by the title, this story time is going to be about how me and Ghost met for the very first time. I know the title says abusive boyfriend because he did turn out to be abusive. But these stories that I'm telling right now, we are going to be leading up to that time, that, that point um, in my life. But we're just going to start off normal because you know everything started off fucking normal like any other fucking abuser would be if you haven't subscribed yet please go ahead and subscribe right now because this story is gonna get just a lot more juicier and juicier and juicier my last video if you haven't watched it please watch it you need to watch all of these videos in order so that everything can make sense so if you have not watched this video i'm gonna i think i'm gonna probably number the videos so you can kind of you know know what order to go in my last video i talked about how ghost and i met um, which was on Twitter. Yeah, I know. Very, very stupid. But I'm just keeping it real. I made a lot of stupid decisions, y'all. I'm just going to keep it on it. So I don't need y'all to be in my comments telling me, oh, girl, you were stupid. Because, bitch, I know. I'm gonna. I'm telling y'all up front. I was stupid in a lot of these situations. Uh, a lot of these stories, I was stupid, dumb, naive, like, just fucking cuckoo. So um, I don't need nobody to tell me that because I already fucking know. So, anyways, my last video, like I said, I talked about how we met. So, we did end up meeting, like, face-to-face -face very, very shortly um, after meeting online. So, we had a, a brief conversation on Twitter, and then it went from, we didn't really talk that, that long on Twitter. It went from Twitter straight to text messages, straight to FaceTiming. Um, I believe I still had these text messages of how we met or the, our first conversation. As y'all can see, he was a very sweet guy supposedly like he acted sweet he acted like he was a charmer like he knew everything to say he knew how to you know make me smile you know he he said all of the good things that i wanted to hear at the time about, i don't remember exactly how long i'm gonna say probably maybe um, maybe about three to five days after meeting each other on twitter and um getting to know each other stuff like that on Twitter we ended up meeting up in my last video I did mention that we stayed like literally 10 minutes away from each other and I had never met anybody that stayed so close to me like everybody else that I met that seemed like a cool person to talk to or whatever they all fucking stayed far as hell my car was in the shop at the time um, because by the way I had just got that car and like <laughs> two weeks later two or three weeks later it ended up fucking breaking down on me so my car was in the shop at the time so i wasn't able to even go anywhere to see a nigga any fucking way if i wanted to basically he was just like um when i when i'm gonna be able to see you da 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 i work from home like i said so i was home all day every day didn't have a car anyway so i ain't have nowhere to go or nowhere to be i was vulnerable like really i'm gonna say that I, I really was and the fact that i had someone showing me attention and actually seeming to be in genuinely interested in me like i said seeming to be okay because yeah we're gonna get into that later but um he seemed like he really was interested in what you know i had to talk about and everything like that and i really liked that so he ended up coming actually the day he came Nikki and I, if y'all don't know, that's my sister, Nikki J Beauty. Please subscribe to her channel. Hey girl. We were recording at that time, that day or that night rather. We were up recording, drinking wine and stuff like that. I will warn y'all, it's gonna kind of get TMI, kind of gross, bloody and nasty, but I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep it real. As a woman, okay, <laughs> whenever you're on your cycle, 
all right I'm, I'm saying i don't normally say psycho i just say fucking period but i'm just i'm gonna use the word psycho because i don't want to gross y'all out too much so whenever a woman is on her cycle usually it's like heavy in the beginning and towards the end it's light and so mine particularly was basically exactly like that it didn't really last for more than about five or six days max and um I was just now getting off of it at that time. I was texting him in between me and Nikki recording um, whatever video we were doing that day. I know what video we were doing. We were doing the um, the smoking weed for the first time story time. If y'all haven't seen that story time, go ahead and check that out. Throughout that video, him and I were texting and I was letting him know. I'm like, well, me and, my, um, me and, me and Nikki, we're recording right now so you could just come later and he was like okay cool nikki left at about maybe 10 almost 11 ish or whatever so i'm gonna be honest i had no intentions on doing anything else besides getting to know this guy and chilling watching netflix maybe you know because a bitch didn't have did i have cable yeah i did have cable but i didn't have cable in the living room at the time i only had cable in my room but he was in the living room he didn't go to my room but um i just had intentions of us you know watching Netflix, chilling, getting to know each other or whatever, trying to figure out who this nice ass guy is supposedly, right? He actually made it there before Nikki left. He was like, I'm here. And I was like, well, um, Nikki's still here. I didn't tell her that a nigga was getting ready to come see me at the time, you know, cause I knew what she was gonna say. She was gonna probably be like, girl, you crazy. Like, you don't even know this dude. I know, again, it's dumb as hell. I knew myself it was dumb. Shortly after she left, he, um, like literally he was walking to the door like I had like my light set up still I didn't even have time to clean up or anything like that I was just you know I had my makeup on and stuff because I was looking cute for the, for the video but you know I I wasn't expecting him to be there right then and there like so soon he knocked on the door and I'm looking at the people you know trying to see who the fuck that is making sure you know it ain't no old man even though if it was an old man, I still would've been fucked because I gave this nigga my address. Girls, ladies, guys, don't do that. Don't follow my footsteps. The story is not to condone what I did. The story is to help y'all not do what the fuck I did, okay? Um, we, he came in the house and first thing I noticed about him was, damn, we the fuck the same height. Now, if y'all don't know me, I am 5'7 and a half, almost 5'8. I'm kind of tall. Well, how can I say this? I don't feel like I'm really tall because 5'8 really? isn't really tall. But for a girl, and a lot of guys these days, I don't know. I don't know what happened. They just don't grow <laughs> no more. But um, because I've been this height for for a long time. Like I stopped growing a long time ago, but I was always the tall one. Um and I always I always wanted to be with taller guys. Like the the relationship I was in before he was taller than me, but whatever. I see this nigga, we 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 looking at each other fucking eyes. But I'm like, okay, whatever, as long as he ain't no midget, okay? And y'all already know why I said that. If you don't, then um you need to go to my midget story time. He came to the house and I was nervous or whatever and he looked like he was nervous too. He immediately sat down. He had a backpack on, um, on too, and I'm like, why the fuck does he got a backpack? I never really understood that, like, why niggas carry a backpack. Like, first of all, it's just like a regular backpack. I don't know what the brand, the name brand is, but I think it started with a J. Jan Sport. Yes, it was one of those. And I'm like, the fuck this nigga moving in, or like, what the fuck is going on? We were sitting down or whatever on the couch, um, and just talking. I was nervous and he was, he wasn't really talkative, honestly. Wasn't even really talkative on the phone. Like, we would always find each other just on FaceTime, like, before we even met. And even after we met, we would always find each other on FaceTime, just not really fucking talking. I don't know, it was weird. I didn't think nothing of it, like, whatever. Maybe he just don't have nothing to talk about. So, I just, you know, and I'm shy too myself, so I kind of was okay with him not talking much because I'm really... A shy person if I don't really know you so I, I wasn't really worried about it anyways we watched some movies couple movies on Netflix and mind y'all he didn't leave the house until probably about five o'clock that morning he came to my house at like 11 11 something that night and then didn't leave till about five o'clock like I said let's get into it basically uh, like a couple hours went by a couple movies went by um, I even like gave him snacks or whatever like I always had snacks in my house you know it was just me so, 
um, I kept snacks and stuff, so I, I think he ate some chips or something like that. And one thing before I get into what I'm about to say, I noticed, <laughs> if y'all don't know, in my last story time, I discussed how he would always want me to call him and he would never call me. I didn't catch on to why he, he said that or why it was like that until this point. He came to my house or whatever and one of the very first few things he asked me was, what's your Wi-Fi password? My nigga, what the fuck? You are a guest number one. You've never been to my house. That's kind of fucking rude for you to ask me my Wi-Fi password and you just fucking met me like, how you fucking know I want you to have my fucking Wi-Fi password? Like, what the fuck? But I didn't think nothing of it until he asked me that. And I was like, this motherfucker phone is turned off. That's what that shit is. His phone is turned the fuck off, and he just don't want to fucking admit it. <laughs> and so, I just kind of, like, giggled in my mind or whatever. That kind of should have been a red flag. Well, it should have been a red flag for me because, first of all, nigga, like, you saying, okay, yeah, you just moved to to Houston from New Orleans or whatever for a better, better life with your phone ain't even on. Like, nigga, how's you, like, what, what are you really doing with your life? You know what I'm saying? My phone is on. Like, what are you doing? And, of course, I forgot to tell y'all, he didn't have a job, obviously. Y'all probably figured that out by now. But he didn't have a job at the time either. That should have been a red flag to begin with. Like, he was like, um... I'm about to, I'm trying to go to school, I haven't, uh, I'm not, I'm not working right now though, whatever, and I was a working bitch, I'm always a working bitch, like, you know, I've never been with, out without a job for longer than a fucking week, you feel me, and whenever I have my jobs, I keep my jobs, why, because I'm a working bitch, I should have known right then and there that, okay, you talk to a nigga who ain't got no job, what the fuck can he do for you? His phone ain't even fucking on. If he wants to fucking go out here and fucking get kidnapped or something, he can't even fucking call you besides 911 because why his phone is fucking off. <laughs> so, again, me being stupid I, and me being, I, I'm so accepting also. Not necessarily, like, I'm, I'm stupid. I, well, I was stupid too, but I'm also accepting. Like, I look, try to look past different things like that. I try to look past a lot of stuff like that because... I know we all go through things, we all go through tough times and stuff like that, so I'm not about to judge somebody else because they're going through their tough time, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, we watched a couple movies. I still have my clothes on and stuff like that because, like I said, Nikki had just left and we were recording, so I was still in my clothes, full makeup, everything. I had went to the bathroom a couple hours later or whatever um, to change my clothes. I had changed into my sweatpants and stuff. Now, I went to the bathroom and, like I said, I, I was on my cycle, but ain't nothing was coming out. Like, you, you know how, well, I can't say you know, but women sometimes wear a panty liner or whatever, even whenever they're technically off, but they want to still make sure that they're off, you know what I'm saying? And so that was the stage I was in, but I didn't see anything. Nothing came down, nothing came out. I didn't see not a damn thing. I'm good, right? We were chilling, watching movies or whatever, and... He was laying on, on my couch with me, obviously. I didn't make the first move. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that I did not make the first move because I'm not a first mover ass bitch. Again, do not follow my footsteps. Don't give it up that quick. He made the first move, like I said, and um, obviously what happened happened. You know, I don't have to really get into much detail mm -hmm. about that. One thing I did notice, which will be my next story time, it was very quick it was a quick thing yeah it was quickie and when i say a quickie i don't mean like oh let's get it in real quick i'm not necessarily gonna get mines but we're gonna get a quickie it wasn't like that it was more of a quickie like bitch i'm done like what the fuck like and i'm looking like you don't like it was more of those type of quickies to yeah like he was satisfied and i on the other hand was looking fucking crazy okay let's just put it like that so <laughs> After we finished doing what we was doing, um, he went to the bathroom first. Um, I told him, like, you can just go to the bathroom. And I was, like, cleaning myself up, you know, myself. Um, but I was cleaning myself up in the dark because the lights were off. And um, he come out the bathroom, and um, he go in the kitchen immediately. And then he started turning, off, turning on my sink faucet in the kitchen. And was asking for paper towels and stuff like that. I'm like, why? What's wrong? And he was like, man, I got blood all over the place. I'm like, what are you talking about? He was like, man, I, I got blood all over my fucking neck and shit. I'm like, oh shit. 
like what, what do you mean <laughs> and so i immediately knew obviously what went wrong but like i said prior to all of that happening nothing came down like nothing like and then it didn't fucking last that fuck long anyway so i'm trying to i'm tripping like what the fuck is going on but um i felt bad immediately and i apologize i'm like oh my god <laughs> I'm so sorry, um, my bad, um, you know, I, I just knew he was gonna stop fucking with me, <laughs> I just knew that was gonna be the last day I ever heard of him, talked to him, s- spoke of him, any of that, I just knew, but, um, he cleaned up, did what the fuck he had to do, and sat back on the couch and even chilled with me a little while longer, <laughs> surprisingly, but still, I was thinking, okay, yeah, even though he chilling, this gonna be the last time, like, I see him, but whatever my bad i mean i didn't fucking know like i honestly did not know about five o'clock in the morning like i said he ends up leaving or whatever Uh, i think he ended up like falling asleep or something too and then you know woke up i don't know but he ends up leaving and um he gave me a hug or whatever and i did he i think he gave me a kiss too bye yeah he did and he was like i'm gonna call you when i get home and i'm thinking to myself this nigga fucking lying like this nigga ain't about to call no goddamn body like he is done with me over finito like i am done (laughs) and so is he like this is me thinking to myself but didn't actually happen that way obviously because i have a whole lot i got maybe um 20 more stories to tell about him (laughs) if not 30. that was our first encounter he wasn't my boyfriend at the time obviously moral of the story is number one don't give it up so fucking soon especially if you don't know the guy like you don't even know him from adam eve steve or bill like bitch what the fuck are you doing second moral is if you feel like even if your cycle just fucking ended and you feel like you're straight give it about another two more days to make sure you good because you don't want to be you don't want your fucking living room bedroom to be looking like a fucking crime scene because that's not cute and that's ill girl what the fuck is wrong with you and moral of the story number three if nigga asks you for your wi-fi password um you need to kick him to the fucking curb because nigga why the fuck you want my wi-fi password and we don't even know each other like that like that you like what the fuck that's that's kind of like you asking me for my fucking uh twitter password or my fucking i don't know it just seems so fucking weird if a nigga asks you for your wi-fi password that's because he ain't got no fucking service and i don't mean like signal bitch he ain't got no service to where he can make a phone call stay tuned to day four which will be tomorrow i hope y'all enjoy these story times so far like i said it's gonna get even juicier and i'm gonna see y'all in my next story bye because every other person that like you know i communicated with here and there like they either stayed on the other side of town or not in houston at all the fact that ghosts stay so close to me i was like okay you know we talking or whatever he seemed cool and he stayed close by that's that's cool and you know of course like i went to his instagram and